welcome back to my channel team. In this video, we're going to do a step-by-step -step on a recursive CTE. Please subscribe to the channel by clicking the red subscribe button below. In this video, we are going to do a step-by-step -step analysis of the following CTE. You'll notice that this is a recursive CTE and we're going to have six logical steps that you'll be able to follow and understand this. So if you do not understand recursion, this is the video to watch. Let's review step one. Step one is you will notice that there are two SQL statements in the CTE held together by a union. So when this first select statement executes, I'm going to call that step one. Let's evaluate this. Notice here, that I am initializing the hierarchy level as one. And I'm going to find the manager whose manager entity ID is null. Let's find that. And you'll notice that the CEO at the highest level has a manager ID as zero. Nobody is his boss. So he's the boss man. So what we'll do is once this executes one time, this is it. Then we're down here in this union section. So let's go down here and go step by step on what just happened. So find the top ranking person. This step is non-recursive. I'm going to set that to one. When I execute this statement, that's the same statement in the CTE, you'll notice that it yields a one for the business identity and the manage is null. There is no managers. That is the goal of this first step. My first step was to yield the business identity because we're going to be using this in the next step. And you'll see in the following steps, I'm always trying to yield who the business people are and to see if they have become managers and who they are supervise. That is step one. Step one is now finished and it has yielded me the business identity that I need to continue. Let's proceed to step two. Now step two is saying, hey, let's increment this hierarchical level to two. Now take all the business entities we got from the previous level, which was one, then query the manager identity for each of those values. So notice here that I only put one. In the previous step, that's all I discovered. I discovered there was only one business identity. Now in this second pop on this recursion, I'm going to be using one here. Remember on the first one, it was null. Now I'm using one. So when I execute this, Notice that it returns me some records. It returns me five records. So now when it's managed by one, it yields five new people. Now in the next step, I'm going to be using these five people to see who they manage. So that is step two. Now on level three, you're probably wondering where are we getting these values from each time? Well, that's a very important question. Let's look at the original CTE. Notice that we are joining with the CTE, which actually makes it recursive. So as we did step one, this record, it went up into that CTE. When I came down here, when I just searched for business identity was one, Notice that it was using that CTE. So every time I'm doing another step below, notice the results are being saved up into the CTE. The CTE is like a temporary record set. And I just keep adding rows to that. Now let's go back down there and look at step three. Now step three, it's also I'm calling level three, is just the same, it's like level two. That's what recursion is. It's the same action, just keep working until there's no more work to be done. 
And notice here, I'm going to increment that by 1. I'm at 3. So here, I'm going to increment by 1. Now I'm at 3, right? And from that previous one, notice it yielded these five. Now, right now, those are business entities, you know, like the individual people. I now want to take that and go test them against the managers. It's like, how many of these people are actually managing? And who are they managing? Tell me their IDs. So you'll notice here, when we execute this one, it is going to return us 15 new business people. Let's execute that. And there you have that. And notice, I went out there, I have 15 entries. Here's the business person, and here who they're being managed by. And that is step three. We're now calculating step four. Let's take a look at the CTE. Notice we're in this section right here now. We did one is here, so we started with two down here. This is the recursion spot. Notice that I am using the CTE. I'm joining that with the employee table. Every time I finish one instance down here, CTE grows by a number of people. I just stay inside of this until we are exhausted. So that I know on what level I'm at, we keep incrementing this number. Now let's go and do a step-by-step -step on level four. So you saw that I increment that by one, now we're at four. Now, using the business identities from step three, I'm going to use them as my inputs and go find out if any of these guys are managers. And once I execute that, that is going to yield me 32 more people. So these sets of 15 people manage 32 people. And this is another line of supervision. You can imagine now we 15 managers are managing 32 people. And let's see this work. That executed and once that executes that will also be up in that CTE memory and now we'll have all that associative data so when I call this again we'll be able to continue Now notice these 15 produce 32 and that is level 4 step 5 step 5 level 5 we increment this Notice that when I join it with that CTE, I'm joining it on the business entity equals the manager. And that's E2 is actually a real table. That's the employee table. But this CTE, that is dynamic memory. I just, I have a temporary memory thing that's being built right in front of us. And then when we get all done, this union is gonna take each of these level two, level three, level four, level five, and actually build a result set that is the complete CTE data set. So let's go look at level five. Now level five, just like level four, just like level three, is gonna go back to the previous one and say, hey, what did you yield? I yielded 32 business entities. So in level five, I'm gonna take these business entities and I'm gonna say, hey, are any of you guys managers? And then that's gonna tell me who they're managing. And notice that these 36 managers yielded 16 new business guys. So 32 managers, 16 new ones. That means some of these guys, they're not managers. It's obvious. Execute. And notice that we only have our 16. I mean, we're starting to get pretty deep into the tree now. We're four deep in management. And now we just finished our fifth deep and we only have a few people that have five levels of management above them. And that is step five. We are on level six, step six. You are probably wondering, when does this stop? You know, how much longer is this video going to continue? Well, this will stop 
when this SQL statement evaluates to null, that means for that last set of business people that we're checking to see if they're managers goes to null. And that is what the final step is. Notice here in step five, it yielded all these 16 people. And now we are going to be using those 16 to go see if they're managers. Let's see what evaluates. Notice that this evaluated to null. There are no more people in this organization. These last 16 people are at the bottom rung. I'm now back to the original CTE statement. I just finished six and it was now null. So union all is going to be working through two, three, four, five, pushing them in with one. And that's going to build my record set. And now CTE is populated correctly. Now, one thing could happen. If my data was not correctly designed and populated, this could run on forever. And this protects you and me. It's saying, hey, the most I want you to do is six. And then if you get to six, get out. I know it shouldn't go deeper than six. So that's a safety check. And there you have it, team. All the steps to build the CTE. Hey, team, and that's it. I hope you got something out of this step by step and understand how the CTE recursion uh, SQL statement works. I'd appreciate if you could go down there and hit the subscribe button. That would truly help my channel. Thank you.